Jay Sarno first came to Las Vegas on a junket to the Flamingo. And you would think as a man who loved gambling and loved a lot of the things that Vegas does really well, he would have loved Vegas. But in fact, he hated it because he thought it was too bland, too plain, too boring. And instead of just saying, you know, that place wasn't for me, forget about it, I'll do something else. I'll go to Tahoe or something. He said, you know what, I'm gonna go back there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them how it should be done. So we built Caesar's Palace. And the idea behind Caesar's Palace was that it was a refuge from the everyday world. It was themed with this Roman theme that didn't really make sense chronologically because you had all different time periods mashed together. But the idea was this is ancient Rome. And when you step in here, everyone is here to cater to you. All your whims, all your desires will be met. And this was really unorthodox at the time because most casinos either had a Western theme like the El Rancho Vegas, which had burned down a couple of years, years earlier, of course, the last frontier, which had become the new frontier, or they had a sort of very muted international theme, you know, nothing really too indulgent, too over the top. What he did was he themed everything, everything from the stationery, which was burned around the edges so it looked like Nero fiddling while Rome burned, to the cocktail waitresses wearing dresses that looked like togas. You know, everything had this aspect where they, they pushed it. You know, it wasn't supposed to be a reconstruction like Colonial Williamsburg. It was really supposed to be this fun, tongue-in-cheek recreation, just an attempt to create this little island of fun in the middle of the desert, and he succeeded. You know, originally, many people were skeptical about Caesar's Palace. It cost a lot more than other casinos cost. But once it opened, the party started, the high rollers started coming, and it never looked back. Jay Sarno followed up Caesar's Palace with Circus Circus, which had a big theme, the big top theme, to be more precise. And again, it was the idea that wherever you went, you could not escape the fact that you were in a circus up to and including having aerial acts over the casino itself, which it originally did. You know, this, because it didn't have a hotel, Circus Circus didn't catch on quite to the extent that Caesar's Palace did, but it showed that it could be done. Kirk Kerkorian's first two hotels, the International and the MGM Grand, had more subtle themes. You know, International is international travel. MGM Grand, of course, was Hollywood and MGM Studios. But theming really came into its own with the Mirage and Steve Wynn in 1989, and then the mega resorts that followed it in the 1990s, where you had Luxor, which was ancient Egypt, you know, Paris, which was Paris, New York, New York, which is New York, New York, and Treasure Island, which was pirates. And really, this is where they took the theme idea that Sarno had and turned it up even further than Sarno did, which was quite an accomplishment. And that is really the legacy of theming. After the 90s, they moved on and now things are again a little bit more su subdued. But really for a lot of people, this was peak Vegas where you had the pirate ship battles and all that other fun stuff.